Welcome, science hunters. After special relativity proposed that each observer perceives space and time differently, a space-time dimension was formulated by incorporating this difference, and it was called Minkowski space-time. Let's hunt down this space-time. Before we dive into the video, liking the video and subscribing would make me happy. Let's begin. In 1905, Albert Einstein defined space and time as an inseparable structure with his theory of special relativity. In our previous videos, we explained how special relativity causes length contraction and time dilation depending on the observer's speed. This showed us that the rate at which our position in space changes also affects the rate at which time flows. Thus, we realized that space and time are inseparable dimensions. As a result of special relativity, space and time were combined into a single space-time dimension. Since this concept was introduced by Minkowski, it was named Minkowski space-time. Hermann Minkowski provided a mathematical framework that helped us understand Einstein's theory of special relativity more deeply. Minkowski space-time is defined using a four-dimensional coordinate system. This system extends the classical mechanics spatial coordinates x, y, i, z by adding a time dimension t. The time dimension is multiplied by the speed of light to make it compatible with the spatial dimensions. From special relativity, we know that the speed of light is constant for all observers. Therefore, multiplying the time coordinate by the speed of light does not create any inconsistencies in space-time. Although the unit of the time axis appears to be a length unit, it represents the distance light travels in a given time, meaning that the time axis remains fundamentally tied to time itself. For a stationary observer, this space-time structure resembles classical Euclidean space. However, for a moving observer, the space-time axes tilt at a certain angle. This angle can be determined using the equations of special relativity. Let us recall the equations of Lorentz transformations we learned in special relativity. Lorentz transformations describe how an observer, whether moving or stationary, perceives space-time in Minkowski space. These transformations define the relationship between two reference frames moving relative to each other. In Minkowski space-time, the axes of a stationary reference frame, where V equals zero, the x-axis and the ct-axis are perpendicular. However, for a moving observer, their axes x prime and ct prime tilt at a certain angle. This tilt can be analyzed as follows. For a stationary observer, the world line of a moving observer is given by x equals vt. However, a moving observer does not perceive themselves as being in motion. From their own perspective, their position remains unchanged. Since the moving observer follows their own world line, their time axis must lie along this world line. This results in a tilt of the time axis, with the inclination given by hyperbolic tangent theta equals v over c. The x-axis tilts by the same amount due to the same reasoning. We will explain later why this inclination follows a hyperbolic function. This approach provides an accurate and visually intuitive representation of Minkowski space-time. The tilting of the axis is directly related to the ratios v over c and c over v. These tilts illustrate the geometric meaning of Lorentz transformations, offering a way to visualize key relativistic effects like time dilation and length contraction. Since time progresses in a single direction, the evolution of a system in space-time is represented by its world line. Defining the metric tensor in a given space is a fundamental step in understanding its geometric and physical properties. The metric tensor is a mathematical tool that determines distances, angles, and vector magnitudes at every point in space. With the help of the metric tensor, we can calculate distances between two points, the lengths of curves, the areas of surfaces, and the angles between vectors. This allows us to obtain accurate results not only in Euclidean space, but also in curved spaces or different coordinate systems. In Euclidean space, the distance between two events is defined as in Minkowski space, time is included in the distance between two events since time and space are unified. The negative sign in front of time in the Minkowski metric indicates that space and time are connected in an inverse manner. This negative sign ensures that the space-time interval remains unchanged under Lorentz transformations, preserving the Lorentz symmetry of the laws of physics, meaning that physical laws remain the same for all observers. 
To understand this, consider an event observed at coordinates t, x, y, z in one frame. If another observer, moving at speeds close to the speed of light, measures the same event in a different reference frame, the new coordinates t prime, x prime, y prime, z prime transform according to Lorentz transformations. However, the space-time interval remains. This interval is the same for both observers. This invariance of the space-time interval is one of the cornerstones of special relativity, ensuring that the laws of physics hold for all observers. For example, the concept of the light cone is preserved due to this invariance. No matter which reference frame is used, light always propagates along surfaces where s squared equals zero. This confirms that causality is preserved and that there is no universal notion of absolute time. Ultimately, this is what Lorentz symmetry explains in the universe. Considering the coefficients in the space-time interval equation, the metric tensor of Minkowski spacetime is written as this metric matrix is essential for vector operations in Minkowski spacetime. Since the spacetime interval is given by negative c squared t squared plus x squared plus y squared plus z squared, it can be negative or zero. When the interval is negative or zero, the two events can influence each other, meaning one event could causally affect the other. However, the maximum speed at which such influence can propagate is the speed of light, since special relativity establishes that nothing can exceed the speed of light. This condition leads to the formation of the light cone, which represents the causal structure of Minkowski spacetime. The light cone defines the region in spacetime within which an event can influence or be influenced by another event, ensuring that causality is preserved. If an observer moves at the speed of light, the time and position axes tilt by 45 degrees. This represents the region of space-time that an event can influence in the future. The negative time region of this cone is the past light cone, which shows which past events could have influenced the present event. The regions outside these light cones represent events that are causally disconnected, meaning that an interaction between them would require faster-than-light communication, which is physically impossible. As evident from the light cone, the motion of an object is confined within a hyperbolic space, which is why the geometry of Minkowski spacetime is hyperbolic in nature. Instead of the Pythagorean theorem used in Euclidean space, a hyperbolic metric is used to describe spacetime intervals. Minkowski spacetime is defined as a Lorentzian manifold with a minus plus 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 or plus minus 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 signature metric. Therefore, Transformations in this space are performed using Lorentz transformations. For example, when the velocity of a reference frame in two-dimensional space is v, the Lorentz transformations are written as follows. It is possible to write this expression in hyperbolic functions because special relativity uses a hyperbolic parameter, the rapidity theta, instead of the velocity v. As can be understood, the hyperbolic cosine is equal to the Lorentz factor. Relative time and position are then written as follows. This form is similar to rotational transformations in Euclidean space, but with hyperbolic functions instead of circular functions. In Minkowski space, the transformation between time and space components is expressed using hyperbolic functions because the fundamental symmetry group of the Minkowski metric is the Lorentz group, which preserves hyperbolas described by hyperbolic functions. As a result, the use of hyperbolic functions instead of trigonometric functions in Minkowski spacetime is necessary to maintain consistency with Lorentz transformations. Minkowski spacetime is not just a space composed of position and time. It also also includes a momentum energy space. In special relativity, we know that an observer's velocity affects how mass is perceived. Therefore, in this space, the axes are defined as E per C, Px, Py, and Pz. This allows events with velocities comparable to the speed of light to be properly analyzed. The momentum energy space is used in particle accelerators to analyze the energy and momentum of colliding particles. This analysis enables the prediction of properties of newly formed particles after collisions. In cosmology, the expansion of the universe and high-energy processes in the early universe are explained based on these relations. In quantum field theory, interactions between particles are described in terms of four momentum exchanges, ensuring the conservation of energy and momentum. 
In astrophysics, phenomena such as supernova explosions, the motion of particles around black holes, and the energies of cosmic rays are evaluated using this framework. Let's do some example for learning the analysis of Minkowski spacetime. Suppose we have two observers. One is stationary, while the other moves through space at a speed of 0.3 c. Both observers are watching a billiard game. In this game, a billiard ball is moving at 1% of the speed of light. Quite an unusual billiard game. Using this speed, we can draw the world line of this billiard ball as this. If we want to find the position of this billiard ball after one second for both the stationary observer and the moving observer, we can use Minkowski spacetime. First, for the stationary observer, we determine the coordinates as we would in normal Euclidean space. By looking at where the point intersects the axis, we can directly obtain the time and position values. The time and position values found for the stationary observer need to be transformed for the moving observer. To do this, we must tilt space and draw lines from the stationary observer's time and position values so that they intersect the moving observer's time and position axes in the tilted space. The coordinates of these intersections can then be determined using hyperbolic trigonometric functions. In this example, Minkowski spacetime allows us to visualize the Lorentz transformation of a world line for different observers. Let's use our billiard example again. This time, let's consider two billiard balls at different positions colliding. These collisions occur simultaneously for the stationary observer. In Minkowski spacetime, this moment of collision is called an event point and is represented as a single point in spacetime. The event points for both collisions occur at the same time according to the stationary observer's reference frame. However, for an observer moving at 0.6 times the speed of light, these billiard balls collide at different times. This difference arises due to their different positions. In Minkowski spacetime, we can determine this by considering the tilting of the moving observer's time and space axis and examining the coordinates of the event points on these axes. As you can see, Minkowski spacetime demonstrates that an event that occurs simultaneously for one observer may happen at different times for another observer. This is a fundamental law of the universe arising from special relativity, relativity of simultaneity. Let's move on to another example to prove that Minkowski spacetime works. This one is truly strange. Let's illustrate and explain the famous thought experiment that arises from special relativity. The twin paradox. One of the twins stays on Earth, while the other travels away from Earth at 0.5 c and then returns. From the perspective of the twin on Earth, we will draw the world line of the traveling twin. When the traveling twin returns to Earth, let's say a time t has passed. We now determine what values this t corresponds to in the traveling twin's spacetime. Since the traveling twin's spacetime is tilted, the intersection points of the bent spacetime axis are found using hyperbolic trigonometric functions. As a result, we obtain ct equals 0.866 ct prime. This means that if the twin on Earth has lived for three years, the traveling twin has only lived for 2.6 years. In other words, they are no longer the same age. Thus, the paradox is resolved through Minkowski spacetime. The theory of special relativity applies only to observers moving at constant velocity, without acceleration. However, the true nature of the universe also includes accelerated motion. To explain acceleration, Einstein developed the theory of general relativity. General relativity explains that spacetime is curved by mass and energy, and this curvature is perceived as gravity. While Minkowski spacetime represents a flat spacetime without gravity, in general relativity, spacetime is curved. A massive object bends the surrounding spacetime, altering light cones as well. This curvature determines the motion of objects and affects causal relationships. For example, near a black hole, light cones tilt inward, meaning even light cannot escape its gravitational pull. In Minkowski spacetime, accelerated motion causes the space and time axis to tilt increasingly over time. However, as the velocity approaches the speed of light, this increasing tilt slows down and eventually stops. By considering the effects of acceleration in Minkowski spacetime, another great mystery of the universe, the theory of general relativity, was developed.